Well, in this quarter's PES Win magazine, there's a number of great articles. I want to point out one, Rosemary, that I've been reading through from Bird Vision, and we've had a number of discussions about collision avoidance with birds and bats, and we've had some people on the podcast on the spotlights talking about it. So there's a lot of technology that exists to solve this problem of just trying to avoid interactions with wildlife. Well, bird vision is one of those, and the article in the PES when goes to point out, uh, it uses several cameras wrapped around the base of the tower. So it's not super high up the tower, uh, but it's a 360 camera system, and it is really effective in the article. They say there are 100% detection rates within 200 meters. That's pretty good. Uh, and they're trying to avoid the larger birds, right, uh, from keeping them away from the rotors. So what they're doing is using that bird vision system to shut down the turbine, let the birds fly through, and then start them back up again, which is better than a blanket shutdown which is so expensive to not be operating turbines. And Rosemary, you've looked at a number of these systems over the years. They're becoming more prevalent than they ever have even five years ago, even though we really did care. We just didn't have the technology to go attack the problem. Yeah, they worked They worked well. Actually, I just Googled bird vision wind turbine, and uh, the video that I made on that come up in the <laughs> top of the results. So that's always nice to see that my SEO is uh, working effectively. Um but when I was researching that video, I looked into a, a few different systems um, and Identiflight was the one that I, I talked to a guy who was um, managing a wind farm in Tasmania and they had a problem because there was an endangered bird. Um, I think it was the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle um, and it was getting, it, it, it was it was there in the area and so they had to do something about that to be able to get permission to operate that wind farm and so they put the identified system in and they um, had less bird, <laughs> bird deaths after that than before the wind farm was built so um, they have yeah eliminated the the problem um, and not that much curtailment so they were yeah, that guy was really happy with it um, there's a few other systems around that, that Identify One uses AI and vision, and they, they actually don't put a camera on every single turbine. They have just them um, scattered around the wind farm in particular places. Um, how does this, this system in PS Wind, how does that one work? Is there a, a camera on every single turbine? It doesn't talk about that. I mean, obviously, this is being used over in Europe to start off with, so in Germany in particular. So there doesn't tend to be large farms in Germany. My guess is it's going to be on every uh, turbine tower. But if you have a bird issue, you really want to protect the birds. So putting on on every tower may be the right solution for you or every other tower. It, I guess it really depends upon uh, how scattered your turbines are. Joel and I have talked to a number of operators in the United States about using these systems, and they they, they try to minimize the spend. But in reality, uh, they what they're really doing is they're trying to minimize any interaction with the birds. So uh, they're super cautious, super cautious and erring on the, on the side of more protection instead of less. Yeah, I mean, these these things, the technology works. You don't have to shred birds. I mean, the birds and wind turbine thing, it it's, an, it's blown out of proportion, definitely. But it's also partially about the way that old wind turbines were. So, you know, when they built some of the early wind farms, especially there's one particular one in California. I can't remember the name. They put turbines all along a ridge. And then that happened to be a really important um, migration path for one particular raptor. I can't remember the name of the bird anymore. Sorry. Um, and it was just terribly, it was terribly sighted. And you need to, you know, when you're doing a site assessment, you do need to make sure that there aren't endangered birds that are traveling through the area where you want to put wind turbines. So that's the first line of defense. Um, and then secondly, uh, you know, once a, a wind farm is operating or, you know, if you've got this occasional risk, but you still want to put a wind farm there, then that's the time to implement these technologies. But there's some other things that have changed as well with wind turbines because like early ones, remember, they had those lattice towers and birds used to nest on those or, or perch on them. And then they would take off right into the blades. And, you know, that was bad. So now with wind turbines, uh, you know, uh, just a, a steel cylinder, there's nowhere to roost on one of those. And so 
you've eliminated that. I know I was when I was researching the video that I did on birds, even without any of these fancy systems that are detecting birds and stopping turbines, even without that, the number of bird deaths per turbine has massively reduced because modern wind turbines are just not as um, able to kill birds as the old ones were. So there's heaps of different layers and you choose the system or the combination of things that make sense for the site that you're at. But basically at the end of the day, there's no excuse for wind turbines killing any you know, significant number of birds and definitely not endangered ones. Um, and in general, they, they don't anymore. So it's because of technologies like this. Yeah, absolutely. And this is not the only great article on PES Wind. You need to go download a copy at PESWind.com. Read it. Uh, there's so many good technology items in the magazine and just thoughts about the industry, how to operate turbines, how to be more efficient, offshore, onshore, both. Uh, it's a good read. So go to PESWind.com and read it today. As wind energy professionals, staying informed is crucial and let's face it, difficult. That's why the Uptime Podcast recommends PES Wind Magazine. PES Wind offers a diverse range of in-depth articles and expert insights that dive into the most pressing issues facing our energy future. Whether you're an industry veteran or new to wind, PES Wind has the high quality content you need. Don't miss out. Visit PESWind.com today.